And there we go. Hello, adventure team heading off in May. So super exciting. We've got your order of your itinerary um, now confirmed, which I sent to you last week. Um, I'm sorry to those that aren't here about the error in my email, confusing the dates, but um, please give me a call if you've got anything that you don't understand. So the aim of today is we're gonna go through your itinerary. We're going to go through um, basic admin. I've got a huge long list here. Basic admin, how you get there, things to take, money, telephones, SIM cards, all those questions which you, you, know, you, you start asking before we go. So to kickstart, let's just go through your itinerary and please yell, ask questions as we go through this. Make it interactive so you feel fully confident by the end. So your itinerary, you are all pretty much, uh, we've got your flight, Zoe, are there any flights that we're outstanding? Just Tori and Eva. Tori, we need your flight. We haven't got your flight yet. Um, you will all be picked up from the airport, okay? regardless of what flight you're coming in. And we will send you an email just before saying who's going to be on which flight to look out for X, Y, and Z, da, 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 da. So when you get to San Jose, you are to collect all your bags and there's a final weird thing you have to go through to double check your bags because they check that there's no food in your bags. So all those little snacks you took on the airplane, make sure you've eaten them before this final machine. So you do that, then you go through arrivals into the big outside area and just wait there. There is a little cafe on the right hand side. Go, if you're arriving alone, go and stand outside that cafe, okay? Don't go in it because the driver from the Rosa of America will be looking for you outside, not inside. It's amazing how many people make that error and call me in the middle of the night saying, where's the driver? And of course he can't find you if you're somewhere deep in the cafe. So you've been warned. Uh, there will be a sign saying the leap, Jakera. So that's where you go. You go to the Rosa for that night. It's a sweet little hotel about 10, 15 minutes from the airport and try and get some sleep, okay? But I know with the jet lag and it's so noisy with the birds there that sleep will be near impossible, but do your best. In the morning, you will be all up and at it pretty early because of the jet lag. And your first phase is going to Quipos, which is uh, two to three hours away, depending on the traffic getting out of San Jose. Um, and this is a coastal near, but you're based in a finca, which is just up from Quipos, which is on the coast at just outside, you're staying just outside Manuel Antonio National Park, which is, you're going to Monteverde at the end. They're two contrasting national parks. And this is the kind of the big beast of Costa Rica, which everybody wants to go and explore. And it changes throughout the year. You're going to be, the rainy season has, has started. Don't worry, it's not going to ruin your trip. We're talking, you know, maybe a shower in the afternoon, that's it. So it's going to be waterfalls, lush jungle, utter heaven. So you are in for a treat. The Finca, is a nice place, it's got a little pool, it's rural, you can make a lot of noise there and really can, that's great for bonding and settling in. So this phase at Quipos at the Finca is a combination of exploring the national park and more importantly, helping at our Coco Community Centre, which we set up this time last year in the thick of the pandemic. And now this community center is bright, it's cheery, it's colorful. And we, we pay for a community um, member to look after it and the after school club all the time, but they really rely on you guys. Every leap group goes through here, adding to it, playing with the kids from football to rugby, to tag, to 
painting nails, stickers, you name it, they love doing it. And at the same time, there'll be some form of refurbishment that needs to be done. So all the project materials will be there ready for you. So it is a very busy time and everyone loves it. It's right on the beach. You can all kind of swim. It, it's heaven. You'll love it. So this space, all your food is included apart from two meals out. And it's sometimes lunch, it's sometimes supper. So it's just have that budgeted in your head, depending on the order of events. Sometimes it's you're coming back from um, the community center and you will decide you don't want to go back to the Finca, you want to have supper out or you have a lunch out. So just, just you know, two, two meals out. You could also do lots of adventures in the National Park. And one of the most popular is the zip wire. But I highly recommend you don't do it here and you just do the treks with the guides and you save the zip wire until you're at the end in Monteverde. Apparently it's better. So, you know, clearly you will have those discussions when you're out there, but that's the heads up feedback from past, from past groups. Right, so from Finca, you're from the Finca, you move up to Samara, which is further north up the coast. Here is your kind of beach phase. Well, you all go together, you have the first couple of nights together, then you get split into two groups. And the two, the first group will go off to ASVO to the very remote Robinson Crusoe Turtle Sanctuary, then you come back and the other group goes. So when you're at the Turtle Sanctuary, I'm telling you now, this is your Robinson Crusoe experience. There is no electricity. There is barely running water. We're talking buckets to shower in. There is, you know, you all have to hands on and do the cooking. There's lots of hammocks. You know, it's basic, basic, but everyone absolutely loves it. You have to kind of cross a river to get there. So you feel like you're really in, in the back of beyond. Now, it is post turtle season, but I never say you're not going to see a turtle. Don't, you're not going to see hundreds like you would in December, January, but never say never. A group literally last week saw an beautiful mother turtle coming up on the beach and laying their eggs. So with climate change, the whole world and the life cycle of a turtle is upside down. So you, you never know but you are going to be instrumental in setting up, getting the new hatcheries ready for the new season. So you will be really, really busy. It is back breaking work. So just warning you, please remember to drink loads of water while you're out there because dehydration is one of the things that really hits everybody because you are working in the midday sun, which someone says madness, but I know you can do it, okay? So that's the Samara, when, when, when you're at ASVO, when you're not at ASVO and you're at the beach, this is the time, it's a bit of fun time. You have a couple of surf lessons because the surf there is really good. No, one surf lesson, two yoga lessons. So, but, but there's other things to do. There's the beach cleanups, there's going on little adventures to the islands. Um, there's a snorkel trip, which is extra. I think that's kind of $30. $30 but you're busy in this time. From there, you go to Natua, which is the wildlife sanctuary. Now this, I'm warning you, is your tough phase. This is where you roll up your sleeves and you are working hard. Now the group that have just been there, they amazed me because I warn everybody because they, people say, oh, you never told us it was quite so hard. And I was like, I'm warning you now, it is really tough in there. It's hot, it's humid, and there's masses of animals to look after. But it is an extraordinary, amazing place, which people, you know, the average backpacker does not get to see. And you see Costa Rica's wildlife up close and personal, and it is an exceptional experience. And the group that were there this time, they actually wanted and stayed on an extra day. They loved it so much. So... I don't want to hear any complaints. I want to hear that you want to stay on for at least two more days to beat the last group. Mid session, mid that, um, mid this week at Natua, it is possible if you want to do this particular tour 
called the Tortuga Island Tour. And the groups have, from experience this year have chosen to do it in this week, to break up this week in the National Park, in the Wildlife Sanctuary. But also logistically, it makes sense with where you're based. And that is an expensive tour. It's $75. Um, it's extra, it's optional, but people, most people seem to love, they want to do it. And you basically go off to the islands far you know, off the coast. And there's amazing snorkeling and marine life to see. But that's something you will discuss down the line when you're there. Then your final phase from the hot, sweaty wildlife sanctuary, you go up to Monteverde, which is the cloud forest. And this is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorite places on earth. And you go to this amazing hike, which takes you right up to the highest point of Costa Rica. And if it's a clear day, you can see both the Pacific and the Caribbean coastline. And it's just stunning, you know, bounding kind of mountains, lush green mountains and volcanoes ahead. It's really beautiful. And the cloud forest is just extraordinary and interesting. And you'll go with decent guides who will point everything out to you because it's, it's kind of overwhelming and very dense when you're there. It's much cooler in Monteverde. So this is where you will be wearing shorts and a, and a sweatshirt or long, you know, leggings, that type of thing. Now, there's loads to do extra things in Monteverde. And what I said earlier about the zip wiring, this is where everybody seems to do the zip wire. It is really, really beautiful. You go over these amazing gorges. It's really frightening. But if I can do it, you can definitely do it. There's also a bungee jump opportunity here. I don't know why anybody wants to do that, but apparently a few in every group want to do it. And it's really frightening here because you go out across the gorge in a cage and you hover in the middle of this gorge. They set it all up and then you fly, you, you jump off. I mean, seriously, who knew that people were mad, but apparently you are. If you want to do it, okay, you can only do it on my watch if you have insurance. Now the Campbell Irvine insurance covers you for two bungee jumps. And so you'll be fine. If you don't have the Campbell Irvine insurance, please will you double check. And if you don't, and you really want to do it, call me because I've got an insurance company that will insure you for this adventure on the day you want to do it for about 13, 14 quid, something like that. So we can get it organized. Okay, any questions on your itinerary at this stage? No questions? All good? Feeling confident? Okay, so now we are going to discuss um, money, everyone's favorite topic. No getting around it, guys. Costa Rica is an expensive country. OK, so don't think you're going to be drinking beers that cost 50p. That does not cost your like for like prices. England, America, Europe, you know, there is no getting around it. OK, so. I would budget most people say to us at the end that they've spent an extra hundred and fifty dollars uh, pounds per week and then maybe, you know, with the and then you've got to budget how many big ticket adventures you want to do. So if you budget 150 pounds a week for extras, you know, bits and bobs, and then your big ticket tour items are to choose from. Um, the bungee jump, which costs $85. The zip wire costs $65. A uh, snorkeling tour at Samara costs $30. There's a sunset cruise, which is $10. Um, and the Isle Tortuga island trip is $75. Okay, now you don't need to do any of them. You don't need to do all of them. Or, you, know, you can pick and choose. But that's pretty much it, what people spend their money on. The going through the meals, you know, you're going to think, what am I going to spend? What am I spending that 150 pounds on per week extra? 
Well, it keep us you know, when you're down at the, the kids center, there's little shops and ice creams and da, 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 da. There's two meals and out that you will spend. There's drinks, alcoholic drinks. There's no end to that. Uh, Samara, there's supper out every single night. And that usually costs about $12. This group actually have been cooking inside the hostel to get their costs down. So as a group, you can really work together to um, keep, keep a tight budget, okay? Or you can go mad. You know, it's, they've got everything there, but I really recommend you work together and kind of work out what everyone, the kind of average budget is and work as a team. Now, two are all your foods included, Monteverde, Again, only breakfast and supper, uh, only breakfast and lunch, supper is not included. So that's where, you know, you spend the money. Okay, any questions on the budget? No, no, no. Okay, how to take your money? I recommend you take a Revolut card. Now, Monzo is a bit weird in Costa Rica. Have you, you've heard of the kind of Monzo and Revoluts, haven't you? There's me, yeah. Okay, Monzo for some reason is a bit unpredictable in Costa Rica. Revolut's really good. And of course your normal debit card. So please take at least two cards and you keep them set in separate places. So should you lose one, you've got the backup of the other. Okay. Um, don't, you, I would take out a hundred dollars in cash as a backup, but you will get the local, you will choose, it's better to lose, use the local currency, which you will get out of the cash point through your, through your journey. Okay. And you get little and often, little and often out because the local currency comes in denominations of about a million to the pound, a million to the dollar. So you can imagine you get a huge wedge of notes for very little. So you just don't want to be carrying huge amounts of money around with you. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Um, phones, okay, phone management. I know. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. One question, please. How will the optional popular to us are um, how to pay? Is it very pay? easy? They, you could one can pay by cash or by card. Oh, by heart, it's possible. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay. Um, phones. Please, 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 to every single one of you, take a backup extra telephone. Okay. Don't, and don't ignore me. If you, if you remember nothing else from this Zoom call, it's that. I want everybody to take an extra phone. You would be amazed how many people smash drop their phones into the water, into the sea, leave it on a cafe table, you would be amazed. And you cannot get phones in Costa Rica. Well, you can, but they cost hundreds of pounds. And there is no post to Costa Rica. Well, there is, it's DHL, but it will get stolen and it is a nightmare. So long and short of it is, take two phones and make sure that your second phone, backup phone, is um, unlocked so that you could easily put a local SIM card in there if you lose your phone, okay? Now you're all phone savvy, so you have your ID, your Google ID or whatever they are. Um, so if you did and you move it to a new phone, everything gets copied across, okay? Promise me you will do that. Do not leave home without two phones. Any questions on your phones? No. Um, okay, let, let me just look at the list. Okay, kit, what to pack. Okay, now everyone gets really stressy about, am I taking a rucksack? Am I taking a suitcase on wheels? What am I taking as my main luggage? Okay, I don't mind what you take, but it cannot be a hard suitcase, okay? They are not allowed. Hard suitcases are a nightmare. They're really unwieldy. You can't sling them on the top of a, of a minibus. 
in the back of a bedroom. It, it, it's they're not good. They are banned. But whether you take a rucksack or a soft duffel bag, which you can throw around, you know, which is durable, I don't mind. Okay. But what it, what is really important is that you all take a good day rucksack, which is probably 20 litres ish in size. Okay, because you will need that and you will use that every day for your hikes going here, there and everywhere. When you go ASVO, that's what you will pack your stuff up for two nights, three days. You know, you'll decant from your main bag. So that day rucksack is really important. Okay, don't skimp on that. Okay, water bottle. Please don't forget a water bottle. Amazing how many people do. Okay, hard, hard water bottle. Don't add to the plastic problem. Needs to be really durable. Needs to kind of have a temperature control on it. You know, the type, those chili bottles, that's just perfect. Um, put a pillow, sing, yeah, people get confused. On the, the kit list, it says a travel pillow. It's what, it's what you want. When you're at ASVO, you, you don't have any bedding, hence you've got to take a um, kind of single duvet cover, a mosquito net and a little travel pillow. But the little travel pillow, you know, if you don't want to take one, you can just sleep on it, you know, use a couple of T-shirts as a pillow. So don't don't overthink that. Um, head torch, absolutely critical. That's possibly the most with your water bottle, the most critical thing in your um, kit. First aid kit, really, really, we'll come back to the first aid kit, but that's really important. Um, uh, and sturdy trainers, okay? So I know height of fashion is for you all to wear your cool trainers um, in your, you know, with your, with, your, with your evening, in your evening. I don't know what, what they are, you know. What, so what are they? What are the, tr the trendy trainers? Adidas trainers, you know the type. Yes, you know those. Okay, you don't want to ruin those. Okay, you want to keep those. Those are your kind of evening trainers. But when you're out trekking in the Amazon at, not the Amazon, when you're in Natura National Park, when you're in um, Natura, the wildlife sanctuary and Monte Verde, you really need a pair of trainers. You don't care that are going to get wet, muddy, and possibly not going to return home with you. So pack those and a pair of flip-flops, Birkenstocks, Crocs. I know about Crocs. We know how ugly they are. But one of the team said they, team members in the, one of the last groups said they were the ugliest, but the best things they ever took. Again, Birkenstocks, really, really good thing to take. Okay. So you actually only need three pieces of footwear your trainers for kind of going out, your Birkenstocks, flip-flops or Crocs and a pair of sturdy trainers for, that you don't care about, okay? Um, any questions on the kit? No, no, no. Okay, now moving on to the health and safety. Everyone's, everyone's favorite topic. Okay, health-wise. The thing, the two things you're going to suffer from most, common complaints are dehydration, okay? So you have got self-management is really, really key here. You've got it. It's not just about drinking loads of water. It's your sugars and salts. This is the only time where I actually really um, encourage people to drink Coca-Cola, okay? It is really good at getting your sugars and salts in you. But if you can take some rehydration salts, um, which you get from Boots or a general health store, they are, it's really worth, especially in week one, when you're acclimatizing and a bit out of sorts with the, a climate, with the new climate, the jet lag, to maybe take that every day just to keep your, flu, your body fluids, you know, really on an equilibrium level. Um, signs of it are headaches, diarrhea, feeling a bit achy and feeling a bit out of sorts. Uh, those are really, really, as, as soon as you've got any of those signs, you know that the, the first thing you need to reach for is the rehydration salts. 
Okay. The other thing which catches people all the time is the simple cut, the simple mosquito bite, insect bite that you scratch and gets infected. That needs to be looked after really um, quickly and anti antiseptic, keep it dry and keep an eye on it. Okay. So it's the red ring around, uh, around a bite that you need to keep an eye on, but also how, how you're feeling because in the tropics, the simple cut does not heal. Okay, so you've, you've, you've just got to be, you know, on it and take responsibility for those two particular things. Anything else, like um, if you, you know, had a fever and we needed to take you to the doctor, that is easily, easily done. Um, you know, antibiotics, it's easy to get there. The hospitals are fantastic, da, 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 da. COVID, you know, it's, if anybody was to get COVID, we would deal with it. And the one thing I just want you to all um, bear in mind is in your kit list, please will you take some, if we can still get hold of them, though the home kit antigen tests, okay? Shove some of those in your bag because before you go to Natua, they, um, to the wildlife sanctuary, they want everybody to do a test just to make sure everybody is COVID free. OK, they should be dropping that because they've dropped all COVID restrictions in Costa Rica, including mask wearing. That's all gone. But if they're still being very uptight, that is just something that you just want to have readily available to do. Otherwise, it costs thirty dollars to go and get an antigen test. So it's a cost that can be avoided. Now, if on the on the on this trip, if somebody got COVID, and one is moving on to the next stage, we will deal with that at the time, depending on how many, where we are, da, da, da. But the worst case scenario is that you would be taken to the next phase, but have to be isolated in a hotel locally nearby. And that would be an extra cost, but a cost which is recoverable through insurance. So mentally, just have that in your head that if that happened, we will look after you, we will keep you close, but you would have to be isolated and it would probably, you know, depending on where you are, be in a separate room, separate hotel, wherever it is. I'm just thinking mainly of Natua. We would, there's a hotel nearby where we would pop you in while everybody's in the wildlife sanctuary. So we're, we know exactly what to do, but it's different in every scenario with numbers and da, da, da. but it hasn't actually happened for the last four months so touch wood it's a thing of the past um so that is all from me does anybody have any questions at this stage Ta -da. confident is everyone feeling confident yep gotta get on the plane meet all these new people work hard, play hard, lot of sweating that goes on during the day. Oh, washing your clothes. I know parents, that's a question that everyone asks. How are they gonna keep clean? I don't know. I don't know how they do it, but they do. In every phase, get used to washing your underwear in the shower and hanging them out for everyone to, um, to, to judge you on. And, uh, but there are uh, little uh, laundrettes at every place. So, da, da. so somehow it all, it, you know, you don't, you don't, you manage to keep clean. Um, so that is it. One last thing is that you probably will all want to change your flights and not come home. This happens all the time. So be open-minded parents. This is really to you to get that call in week three saying, actually, we're not coming home. Now we're going on to, to Guatemala, Timbuktu, or even flying down to Peru. It's all possible. So parents, just brace yourself for that call and we'll steer you, steer you accordingly. Okay. Other than that, from me, I wish you a fantastic adventure. You're going to, you're in for a treat. And so long. Goodbye. I'm still here if anyone's got questions. <laughs>